Oh, God, we got to get this. We got to do this right today. This is going to be our most popular show, everybody. This is going to be our most popular show. Hold on, let me. Mm. Mm. Professionalism achieved. Let's get busy. Three, two, one. And welcome back to another episode of Inside Star Citizen. We got my fam over here. Cash is in the house. Pirate's in the house. Kelly's in the house. Michael's in the house. Raisin's in the house. Did I miss anybody? Killian's in the house. How could I forget Killian, for God's sake? Pi I said pirate. Damn it. Who else? Crom's in the house. Hey, Crom, what's going on, dude? Everybody's in the house. We're all going to have a good episode. We should, we just stretched it out before this before this episode. We stretched it out. We wanted some professionalism. We got the hashtag professionalism. We're ready. Last week, I have to say, last week, I have to say, I was off the hook. I was a little bit angry last episode. I think a lot of people were, and we talk about that in length on the channel. I will not get into that. We are on a new page today. We're breathing, getting the namaste vibes. Yeah, we're getting the zen vibes. We're going to pretend that last week didn't happen. We're going to breathe. This is the, the roller coaster that is the Star Citizen uh, development, the progress here, the Star Citizen roller coaster. We're going to relax, everybody. We're going to enjoy. Now, let's start the show. Earlier this week, the Star Citizen community was introduced to the Aegis Nautilus Strategic Mine Layer. The first of its kind ship dedicated. I'm already stopping the show. I'll tell you what. I love it. I love the idea. I love the mine layer. I did a video on. It. I'm telling you right now, the price tag a little high. And interestingly enough, our fans on the video mentioned that the ship is nearly done. The Nautilus is nearly done. And, and I mean, I'm not quite sure. I'm not. You know, I'm not gonna like say 100. percent That's the way it is. But a lot of the fans out there were telling me like, "Hey, DG, the Nautilus is near done." And they needed it for Squadron 42. So that's really cool. And the reason why they're not going to introduce it into the PU. Oh, thank you, Sam. I am. Welcome to the family. I'm going to have to make those goddamn alerts smaller. And I got to watch the cussing. I, I, I got to have to put a rubber band around my wrist and start snapping myself because I've been cussing a little bit too much lately. A little too dirty lately. <laughs> but it seems like the Nautilus... It seems like the Nautilus is actually much more ready than we all thought. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up over here. All right. So I just wanted to get that out there. And the only reason why they don't have it in the PU right now is because obviously the mine mechanics and SSOCS. Dedicated to the art of defensive yet very explosive warfare. What's the player experience going to be like? What do minefields add to the overall Star Citizen experience? What does it look like? What, what do Mayans add to the overall overall Star Citizen experience? A lot of cool. And they're not going to like persist forever. So people that want to have like minefields for days and for those things to last forever. No, that's not how they're going to work. In fact, I've heard that the mines need to be serviceable as well. Uh, so that's that's actually a pretty cool feature because God forbid everybody and their mother starts laying mines all over the verse and those things last forever. That would be a horrible experience. So it's nice to know that these mines will not be persistent forever look the way that it does. We pose these questions and more to John and Paul ahead of its recent reveal. Let's find out what they had to say. The Nautilus brings exciting gameplay to the Star Citizen universe because it's I like very this ship. traditional. Uh, I like this ship a lot. Chris Roberts style games. I think it just adds a, a, a lot of extra depth. Uh, our combat gameplay yes. is very offensive based at the moment. So it's a, a lot of players going out there hunting down other and you know, the interesting thing about this mine is it also has turrets on it. So there's a proximity zone where it'll blow up a large uh, around large capital ships, which is awesome. And I did a video on this, so there's more information if you guys are looking for it. And there's also turrets for smaller ships, which makes these mines like really vicious in my eyes. Really vicious. Uh, Port Alice are going to be a war zone if they don't. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, they'll, they'll, it'll make sure that they, they've, they've, they've got that area locked down. Don't worry about it. Uh, oh, yeah. Imagine two or more together roaming around for certain. These things are going to change warfare uh, quite dramatically, especially for those people that have larger ships. You're going to you're going to want the ship just to protect your ship, to sweep up mines around it. God forbid you run into one of these minefields, man. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> other players killing other players uh, and taking their stuff. Whereas there isn't a huge amount for the, the players that want to involve themselves. Crumb says, OK, I'm sure there's going to be a rock, paper, scissors mechanic going on. I'm wondering how they're going to handle minesweeping. Apparently, there's a drone or sets of drones within this ship in the Nautilus. Um, 
Patrick, a.k.a. Crom, that will go out and fetch uh, and do the work for you. But you're going to need to be able to scan the area as well, Crom. So it's not going to be tedious. It won't be tedious. I believe they're not. They don't want to make the gameplay tedious in that respect. Uh, Cash says not to mention the S7 front guns have super long range. Hell to the yes, they do. Those things that it's pretty massive. That front turret's pretty massive. Uh, if mines persist, mine sweeping will become a common mission. Yes, it will. I'm not quite sure as to the length of the mines once they are laid. Uh, I would like maybe a day or two. Like maybe I'm off the 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 chain here a little, little bit crazy in thinking this, but I would like mines to at least last like maybe 24 hour period, maybe a little bit longer. And then go away. These shouldn't be things that be, should be out any longer than a day or so. In my mind. You know, if these things only last for about an hour or so. When you're talking about tactical combat with larger ships. I'm not quite sure an hour is going to be enough. You know what I mean? Uh, Sales in combat. But not actually be that sort of either twitch shooter or strategic bomber. They just want to play the longer game. And this is the, the Nautilus is the perfect ship for that. So one of the Ooh. key aspects for the mine layers and minesweepers is... And you know, with that Drake armor being so bad right now, man, you, you get hit with one of these mines. I'm, I'm, I'm worried the people that own a Kraken, if they hit a mine, the, the thing's going to be aptly named. Because it's going to crack and all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Do -do 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 Sorry, rim shot. I had to. I just had Maintaining to. Maintaining their minefields. <laughs> I love Drake. Minefields I love Drake. Minefields a great way to uh, <laughs> add defensive gameplay to Star Citizen. They allow players, whether they're in an org or solo players, to ring fence or protect a sort of strategic asset, whether that's a space station. Oh, that'd be cool, Killian. Just entry methods to... See, there's the little turrets. We get the design brief from John Crew and his yeah. team. And that, you know, gives us our basic spec of what we need to hit. Chris likes to keep it as, you know, open as possible in terms of influences for art. So we can just be free, basically. See, they got a lot of this designed already. And I was not aware of this. The one that Chris chose and the one that was our favorite. It's got that sort of armored feeling about it. But then it's also it hits all the beats that we need it to hit. You know, it's got the big S. It looks like a, a crazy Wolverine or like a, 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 a crazed armadillo. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like a, a crazed armadillo on meth, you know, like it's just, ha, 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 ha. I just feel like the design is right on for the ship. Seven gun on it. It's got the it's got the silhouette change when all the mine launchers pop out. Oh, I know. I know. As a ship from all angles, it looks really good. The other stuff was was interesting. But this one was a clear favorite. You know, when people see it, it's it's a relatively simple shape. You know, it's essentially a triangle. Very ageous. You know, it's kind of a, it's, you know, it's, it's like. Thank you, Pure, Pure Falcon, for following the family. For joining us. Welcome to the family, Falcon. I, how many of you guys like the design of the ship? I have to say, personally, me, I love the design of the Nautilus. I think they really did a great job on the the entire design, and and it matches the function. You know, it matches it, it, to me. It matches the game mechanics. Three levels in the interior, just amazing, just amazing. Like a tech sandwich. You know, you've got the top and the bottom, which are simpler. And then you seem to be slices, getting better. Just heavy tech. You guys, you know, like this is the thing about the uh, designers and the, the ship designers right now seem to be getting better. Is it just me? I just feel like the ships are getting cooler looking and they're like hitting it dead on. Like they're hitting the nail right through the board with with some of these designs lately. You know, some of the older designs, you know, I you know, I had a lot of issues when they did the 300 rework. You guys know that. Like I, I went off with it. I still miss the old 300 and people were saying, you know, there's a lot of people that agree. And there's a lot of people that disagree. But, you know, like I, and, and you know what? I miss the old freelancer. I miss the old freelancer design. Yeah. I, I, you know, the freelancer that came out, but like the old freelancer just felt so Millennium Falcon to me, you know. But lately, I feel like they're really hitting it. You know, like they really hit it. Raisin says it's kind of looked like an anvil ship, just missing the circle. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cool looking. Says Raisin. Michael says yeah, it's different. I love it though. It kind of looks like uh, anvil. Yes, yes. Uh, real gameplay with this ship would have you needing a crew to put these mines together before you could fling them out of the ship. All mines, I believe, will be like pre-assembled, ready to go. You buy them from manufacturers, and hopefully, the economy works in such a way, Jeff, that these mines are actually put together by the industrial players. Like that's what I would really like to see. You know me in economic gameplay. I would like this uh, the aspect of the the manufacturing. And I get into that. I get into that on a lot of prior videos as well. I won't go into that. Let's just concentrate on the beauty and the sexiness 
of the ship right now. It's doing it for me. Back in the middle. Aside from the, the mine laying side of the gameplay, there's the people on the other end of mines. It ties into the whole scanning and exploration side. So these mines are quite hard to detect. Uh, so obviously you wouldn't want them to be huge gleaming red beacons of light that you know are there. They sort of embed themselves into the world quite nicely and ships that are designed for hunting things down, such as scanners, great, they can find them. If you want to go through them, and I love that because that makes ships with scanning abilities that much more important. How many times in other games where scanning ships really don't play a role and they're only there in, in thought only and have no real functionality? I can think of a lot of titles like that where they don't have scanner ships actually there meant to do what they're supposed to do because there's no actual gameplay that, that, that they use those particular ships for so it's really nice that they're actually giving like basically they're giving all ships that are responsible for scanning an upgrade with this game mechanic love it a minefield then the nautilus itself can do some mine sweeping with its drones but then other ships equipped with exactly BMP or distortion weapons can temporarily disable them which helps give uh, other combat ships uh, a way through these areas and then there's the whole supply chain side so Whilst the Nautilus is best place to bring more mines and recover those mines, other ships will be able to sort of assist in that functionality as well. From materials to liveries to weapon attachments and more, yes, it's time for another sprint report. The character, props, weapons and graphics team recently worked together to sort through about 400 plus materials in a review designed not only to improve the overall quality and detail of elements used in everything from clothing to FPS weapons and more, but also to streamline things like diffuse textures and normal maps into a more systemic system that allows our artists greater freedom and creativity when creating new materials for player used items in the verse. It's ongoing work involving higher fidelity scan data that when complete should bring an improved level of realism and depth to existing assets. Next up, the EU vehicle content team are exploring some livery options for the upcoming release of the Vanguard Sentinel and Harbinger. Now, what you're going to see here are not approved final paint jobs. I'm going to say that again just to be sure. They're not approved final paint jobs, but they are explorations currently taking place. You're going to see more of the two remaining vanguards in the coming weeks. In other color explorations, the USPU gameplay features team recently completed a sprint exploring... A so before I go on to this next phase, what do you guys think about the liveries, that the, the, like the, the fact that they're actually charging a little bit more now for the liveries? I understand on one end that, you know, they're doing it because they want the extra cash. And for that reason, like I'm like, hey, good, you know, like they, they're, they're able to actually make more revenue through this stream. But on the other hand, the gamer in me says, ah, I kind of like everything to be customly built in and not cost me additional amount of money. So cash says, I don't care. <laughs> cash is like, hey, man, it's OK. So, like, I know that Elite Dangerous does this, you know, Elite Dangerous. In fact, I think that a lot of people kind of, like, uh, took their cue on liveries when DLC started becoming a big thing. DLC started hitting, and then they said, okay, how many different ways can we capture revenue, right? So, like, liveries and the way that you 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 have the look of a certain item or ship is an additional way to bring in revenue. So, it's a good discussion, you know. It's a good discussion. I might do it as a video on the channel. Uh, Cause I can go either way on the subject. Like I'm a 50 50 guy when it comes to like e capturing extra revenue for the liveries. Uh, Michael says, if it's all available in game at a point, I'm fine with it. Uh, Raisin says, obviously getting stuff free. Isn't that bad? You know what I'm saying? Raisin, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? I, I hear you there, buddy. Uh, Killian says no priority for me. And I think that's where it's interesting because like you, you see like, uh, like hardcore citizens, uh, that will say no big deal. They need the money. We want the game given the money. And then on the other hand, you see like gamers, uh, like not so much in the, in the like hardcore staunch white knight kind of like, uh, not calling cash and Killian white knights by any stretch of the imagination. They're very open-minded people, but like 
I'm trying to delineate the differences between like the different types of gamers that are out there. Like people that are hardcore backers of Star Citizen are completely fine, you know, with liveries and paying the money. But on the other hand, people that aren't necessarily into Star Citizen as much that are aren't supporting the project as staunchly are kind of like, hey, what what what's going on here? Why are you taking additional money from me? So it's a good it's a good discussion. I actually might do that video. That reminds me, I'm gonna write that down. Hold on a second, guys. That's a that's a good video. Sorry, I know I'm in the middle of video uh, right now, but I have to write this down. Hold on. Yes, liveries as a topic. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right, let's continue this and let's see. It looks like UI improvements. It, it does it, it a variety like of new improvements to the Moby Glass embedded chat system including as you can see here the ability to assign specific chat colors to individual channels to help you always know which group oh, you're speaking to. It's one of several improvements the team is making to the that. overall chat experience coming online in the near future. Of course, it's not all visuals this week as the weapons features team has been working to bring additional attachments online to complement the scopes that were added in Alpha 3.6. Oh my like goodness. The suppressor for the LH86 ballistic pistol from Gemini. Suppressors, scopes, underbarrel attachments, and more are just some of the ways the weapon features team are working to. How much better is this episode than last week's episode? I'm a, like so much hap I am so much happier. It's like night and day. It is like night and day right now. Let players customize their FPS. It's amazing what detail will do. Citizen universe. Woo! Suppress action. Suppress action. Woo! Woo! Watch out! Oh my goodness! Suppress action. Hold on, I gotta get that. Yeah. Oh, that, that was sexy. The audio team has been incorporating updates to the systemic Foley system that can alter the audio effects heard dynamically as your oxygen is depleted or your character continues to exert themselves. <laughs> as well as detect the speed of a player character's bones when they fall and impact on a surface to create right a cash. more robust sound when you attempt to make that superhero landing on the surface of a planet or a moon. Oh. Oh. That makes my knees hurt. Star Citizen is more than just a virtual first. By the way, we were just discussing physics on the channel, so you guys might want to check that out after this uh, stream, just to let you know. Universe. It's yeah. often a part of our daily lives. Now, whether that's attending a major event like CitizenCon, more intimate gatherings of backers at regional bar citizen events, or just sitting in our homes or offices working on an Aegis desk mat while wearing a Drake hoodie, the request for more swag is one of the most repeated refrains we hear when we meet our backers. Uh -oh. That's why available now are a new collection of Aegis themes posters, uh, shirts, and Goliath mouse pads on the RSI store. They're the first offerings in a new merchandise initiative being developed here that you'll learn more about as we continue along the road to CitizenCon and beyond. Here's Will to share a little of his team's process when creating the recently revealed Aegis Goliath desk mat. We've done large format mouse pads in the past. <laughs> oh this man! Time we wanted to make the most of that space that's that's there. It's a very wide format. We decided to try and. I know that they're going to get a little bit of heat for this because they're sell they're they're outright selling their merch on this right now. Like I I honestly I I dig the merch, but like I hope that the rest of the episode that is I think we got about six minutes remaining isn't just on the merch because I feel like that could be a bad PR move. Fill it with as many beautiful Aegis ships as possible. The challenges of working with Aegis <laughs> ships is that they're very gray and military. And Michael says, Michael says, nice. We've had the same merch for three years. <laughs> like, Michael's ready. Michael's ready. Uh, Kill says, I don't give a shit. About time. <laughs> and we want to make a mouse pad that's very vibrant. So when composing the image, it makes sense to sort of get your big silhouettes in shape first. One of the things we do is go into the engine and make sure that we've got a very widescreen format to work You know with. what? And then it's sort of a case of... God bless you, Cash. God bless you, Cash. Cash is absolutely right. You spend over a few hundred dollars, you should actually get like some free swag. It's kind of what I was saying when they had the Nautilus sale for the uh, for the uh, Aegis event last Saturday. It's kind of like it was interesting the responses that I got because I was saying how like people that showed up to the event, some of them came out of the country. It had been they, yes, they got the swag. They did have like stuff there at the event, but I was saying shit that people thought was crazy. I was like, hey. If you're spending the money to get to the show, it was like 275 and say you're like in another country and you got expenses, you got the airplane tickets, maybe a hotel. You know what? Maybe just throw in a Nautilus for those people that showed up. I think it was about 130 people showed up to the event. I don't think it's that big of a deal. The numbers on the Nautilus right now are over a thousand ships sold. 
I think we did the numbers on that video. I think we said uh, as of Monday, it was like $700,000. Now, some of that money is actually uh, going to be people that are are melting ships to basically take the money and shove towards the, the ship. But a lot of that is also new money as well. So I didn't think it was that absurd to think of like, hey, you know, for these very special events – Give the people the ship. It's a fucking concept sale anyway. You know what I'm saying? It just is good PR. It's good PR. It does good for the game, in my opinion. In my opinion. Okay, what ship balances well against another one? And having having something where there's there's weight throughout the the image, which is dispersed in a in a way that's pleasing to the eye. You can either do that through color and a silhouette or a bright light source, or one interesting oh, wow, shape dude. that works graphically well with another. And the, I love the how they're just moving the ships a, a around. Key, a key focal point in that image. So once we had the illustration in place, it was a case of trying to make this feel like an Aegis product. So as we developed the Aegis brand, we have a lot of little accents and things that fit with this. So it was then a case of integrating that over the top of the illustration to give you the final result. So we were pleased with the design that we actually sent off. But once we actually received the proof back Ooh. and saw how vibrant the colors had come through in the final result, That's pretty we really sexy. And we had the communities please as well. If you've been right, following Jeff? Star Citizen's yeah. development for any period of time, or any game's development for that matter, you probably already know how important the user interface is to any project. The way in which we interact with our universe is as essential as anything in that cosmos itself, and can sometimes become a bottleneck to the inclusion and enjoyment of features. But all that's changing with a powerful new initiative intended to make the design and creation of UI <laughs> elements more capable, more flexible, and better enabling our designers to bring their vision to life more efficiently than ever before. All right, I'm digging this episode. It's all right, all right, all right. I'm digging this episode. They didn't spend too long in the merch. They just basically said, hey, new merch. They, they went into it. They didn't get too in-depth. They just said, here you go. They showed us some cool shit. Boom! Onto the yeah, efficiency in the underwear. I love it. I love it. You guys, Exciting you guys are time cracking right now me up for the UI. <laughs> the past several months, we've been working on some new tech that we're calling building blocks internally. But really, what it is, it's a replacement for our current UI tools. Before, what we had was a very difficult to use system that uses Flash and Scale Form. And what we wanted to do for the developers internally. Wait! 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 Did I just shit my pants? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I've been talking about this a long time. I've been talking about this a long time. Hold on a second. Hold on. How are they? It was to basically make a tool uh, and a system to make it much easier to actually get UIs into the game. Historically, it's been very difficult exactly, to Jeff. actually author something, and the process has been very convoluted in terms of you know authoring an asset, not seeing it live update in the game, having to export, reload the editor every time you want to make a change. So now with the new tech, we have so many new features that we can employ, like fluid layout, being able to flexibly size a layout to a particular screen dimension so as to make it much easier for us to maintain because we have a lot of different screen aspect ratios and screen dimensions that we need to uh, manage in the game. We have some really cool stuff in our U uh, that we built for the UI tech, like um, a way to dynamically lay out elements um, in any configuration that a designer might want. But you can lay stuff out in columns. I'm lay out digging stuff in what rows, I'm seeing right now. Automatically shrink or automatically grow. So it's it's a very flexible tool. We also have like uh, some very unique functionality to our UI tech, one of which includes a post transform, which basically takes a rectangular element and, and transforms it radially. So you can actually easily create radial. All right, are they going to tell me when this is going to get in the game? Because I remember that they had done and in fact, Mike would agree with me. Mike Philbin is a great guy I, I talk to on the regular who is a part of this Facebook Star Citizen Unification Group. And he's always talking about UI. And I've been talking about UI for, for years and how it needs like general improvements. And one of the things that uh, we talk about a lot is the promises that they had made for the scaling screen resolution that never got in the game. And uh, also the uh, hollow Moby glass. You know, those things never really got in. And they, so I, I'm able to see this, which is good. I mean, that's great. But like, do we have like a date set in here? Is this something that was built in the roadmap? I'm not quite sure. Hey, Mosquito, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome man, to the stream. The, all the functionality that you would have. I love in it. A regular, I absolutely love what they're uh, showing. Linear, I know it's I know it's there because I'm seeing it. Then just it's simply inherited into the radio menu. 
Oh my God. That's what we focus on is, is just how do we make it easy and. Oh my God. I am so freaking happy about this. You don't know how much of a difference this is going to make. This is going to be a huge difference in playing the game. This is going to be a very big difference in playing this game. A big, big difference. When is this getting in here? And very intuitive <laughs> up for on to actually uh, create what they want and get what they want out of the out of the tool. What excites me the most about actually working on this is that is it's very much the foundational. I got goosebumps, uh, system that man. Everyone's going to use to build. I know UI. it sounds silly, but As I actually UIers, got goosebumps still have on this. Have a responsibility this. to define like the styles and the looks and and, and oh, the standardization Jesus. of Wait the Wait a second. Oh wait, I'm gonna have to pause the show here. I just pissed and shit myself. I just pissed and shit myself. <laughs> Hold on a second. Drink to that. Drink to that, everybody. Hold on a moment here. Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. What's going on here? I got goosebumps all over the place right now. I got goosebumps all over the place. This is this is a very this is very big news. <clears throat> this is probably going to be the title that I'm going to put along with the ISC review. UI overhaul or UI updates. Thank you, Jeff. I think I should. I should almost do another video. Killian's right. I, I wish I had the time. What time is it? Anyway, actually let's prototype keep going. something and prototype some gameplay loops. Anyone can do that now. They don't have to be a specialist. They don't have to have a special program to be able to actually author a UI or implement a UI in the game. They can just go into our, our own internal tool, uh, create it themselves and Things are looking hot. Things are looking fresh. You are in test stuff. We can actually see. Oh, you know he's happy. Gameplay. You know he's happy. Do you see that face? He's like, I got you, assholes. You see that? This guy gets so much shit, right? Did you see that face earlier? He's like, I got you, motherfuckers. I got you now. <laughs> start to uh, come alive and the universe starting to feel alive and dynamic. He knows he did good. So what do we learn this week? Well, oh God! Don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that, Jared! Oh, you got to get rid of that line, man! You got to get rid of that line. It's a, it's a it's a it's gonna come back to haunt you. You keep using that line, man. God, Jared! <laughs> what I learned this week? Very happy about UI. Atlas <laughs> aims to bring new dynamics to defensive gameplay in the Star Citizen universe. That's I know, right? Improvements to materials <laughs> right, and sound effects are just some of the ways. It's often the little things that can make the most difference. And that game dev isn't just building features and functions for you, but for our developers, so that they can in turn build faster features and functions for you. To our subscribers, our continuing thanks. It for could be. It could be mosquito like possible. <laughs> and to everyone in the Star Citizen community, keep an eye out for a new episode of Pillar Talk being released tomorrow. Oh, I'm gonna miss this Pillar Talk. Talk. I'm sorry. Oh, I might make it, guys. By the way. I, this isn't in the video because I talked about this before the video. By the way, this was an excellent episode. This was an excellent episode. That 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 UI overhaul and seeing that just lifted my spirits up times 9,000. But uh, I'm going to try and make Pillar Talk tomorrow. It's my anniversary with Christy tomorrow. I told her how important Star Citizen is to me. But somehow I think that Christy is going to just lay the, the, the block down and be like, sorry, our four years together and our anniversary is more important than Star Citizen. And sometimes that's debatable. <laughs> Just teasing, honey. If you're watching. Love you. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody out there. Thank you, Pure Falcon, for following. Sam I am for following. Tease Made for following. And Daddy Cash for that subscription, dude. Thank you so much, everybody who supports the show. Patrons of the show. We're having a giveaway for a Titan. I absolutely love you guys. I wish I had more time because I would definitely keep talking. You know, that's what I love to do. What's up, Davey? Shit, man. I miss you, Davey. I hope everything's good in your life. And uh, anyway, that's the end of the show, guys. Love you very much. Oh, my God. Seven. Thank you for that end of show subscription. What a great way to end the show. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I love you guys. And I will see you on the next streamer vid. Pepper, Jesus. I, I, you guys aren't gonna let me end the show, are you? <laughs> I gotta go. Thanks everybody. Love you guys.